morning all and happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath to everyone. Thank you, Elder Turner, for such a message, a serious message, you know, which of the two shall be elected. Thank you. Um, and I think it, it, the message should be revisited and listened to again. Thank you. Um, before we start our um our lesson on mongousness, let us pray. Loving Father, thank you for waking us up on this Sabbath morning to come once again to hear the encouraging words of wisdom. You are our deliverer, our protector, that has brought us through many trials and, and temptations as we are hearing today. You are our hiding place where we can abide under your shadow of the Almighty. Help us, Lord, to read, to keep, and to share these lessons we are learning. For such a time will come when there will be a famine in the land. And not a famine for food or water, but for the word of God, mercy. We thank you that we can come to the prayer retreat every morning, every day of the year. It is never closed because your door is always open. Because you never sleep and you never slumber. Pour out your spirit on us today, dear Lord, and forgive us of any sin that so easily beset us. Is my humble prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay, uh, we will sing five, two, three. My faith has found a resting place. And it's got four verses. So we'll take the first verse, number five, two, three. My faith has found a resting place. We'll take the first one. Thank I'll you. I'll take a verse as well. Thank you. Number three. I'll take number three. Thank you. Number four. I'll do number four. Thank you, Sister Judy. My faith has found a resting place, not in a man-made creed. I trust the ever-living one that he for me will plead. I need no other evidence, I need no other plea. It is enough that Jesus died and rose again for me. Enough for me that Jesus saves. This is my fear and doubt. And sinful soul, I come to Him. He will not cause me out. I need no other evidence. I need no other plea. It is enough that Jesus died and rose again for me. My soul is resting on the word, the living word of God. His name, salvation through His blood. I need no other evidence. I need no other plea. It is enough that 
Jesus died and rose again for me. The great physician heals the sick, the lost he came to save. For me his precious, for me his life he gave. I need no the evidence. I need no other plea. It is enough that Jesus died and rose again for me. Amen. Amen. We need no other evidence. We need no other plea. It's enough that Jesus died and rose again for us. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you for that beautiful singing. Okay. Um, we're just going to finish up today. And um, yesterday we reread our, our, um, our paragraph um, that this was the beginning of a new life. And we established that. Um, we, we established it as Mary Magdalene. And she loved much. You know, and her sins were forgiven because she loved the Lord. And I think she might have been abused by by um those that she trusted, you know, and believed that she should have she should die by stoning. She was a she believed that she was a sinner. <clears throat> um and it was said that um she wasn't even she wasn't in that position. If she wasn't in that position, yeah, she would not have met Jesus. Yeah. So no matter the cost of self-sacrificing, love and devotion, she repaid for his mercy with all that she had. Because remember, she went and she, she used everything that she had. Yes. And I'm sure that this was the money that she, she gained by uh, her sin. Yes, and she used it for the glory of God. Um, she gave her heart. That's one thing she gave. She gave her heart. She gave everything. Yeah, and the mercy of God is never ending, never ending. The men that brought her to Jesus sealed their own destiny. They rejected the one who came to give life. Yeah, they rejected Christ who gave life to them. And she looked at her life in a different way. And that's how we ought to look at our life too, in a different way, when we know that Christ is in it. Yeah. Um, she knew where the Lord had took her from because we've all been there. Yeah, we can all testify of the goodness of God, yes, and where the Lord has brought her from, where the Lord has brought us from, yes. So, um, any other comments um, from this reading yesterday? So we can move on to the last two paragraphs. No, if not, we will move on to the last two paragraphs. Can somebody? Um, can we have a reader, please? Thank you. Are we? Yeah. Oh, go on, Sister Judy. Thank you. There's, in his act of pardoning the woman and encouraging her to live a better life, the character of Jesus shines forth in the beauty of perfect righteousness. He seeks not to condemn, but to save. The world had for this erring woman only contempt and scorn, but Jesus speaks words of comfort and hope. The sinless one pities the weakness of the sinner and teaches to her a helping hand. While the hypocritical Pharisees denounce Jesus 
bid here. Go and sin no more. It is not Christ's follower that with averted eyes turns from the erring, leaving them unhindered to pursue their downward course. Those who are forward in accusing others and zealous in bringing them to justice are often in their own lives more guilty than they. Men hate the sinner while they love the sin. Christ hates the sin but loves the sinner. This will be the spirit of all who follow him. Christian love is slow to censor, quick to discern penitence, ready to forgive, to encourage, to set the wanderer in the path of holiness, and to stay his feet daily. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sister, for that beautiful reading. Thank you. Yes in his act of pardoning this woman and encouraging her to live a better life. The character of Jesus shines forth in the beauty of perfect righteousness. This lesson is serious. This is serious. And this was not a command, but a promise that there's a better life out there. One that Jesus wants all of us to have. One that he, he, he went on the cross. He pleaded with his father and he went to the cross because he knew, he knew that we would be lost without him. He, he seeks not to condemn, but to save, to save us, to save the, the, the world from a downward spiral because he knew that the, the enemy was cast out of heaven, cast down onto earth, and he knew what he was like, because he took half of the angels, a third of the angels um, down, down here. So we know that it is going to be a mayhem from start to finish. But Christ, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you for what you have done for us. Elder Desire, go ahead, please. Good morning, sis. Happy Sabbath again, and uh, happy Sabbath, brethren. Um, yeah, uh, this these two last two paragraphs are just um, so powerful. Um, uh, the last paragraph there, um, um, you know, let me start from the um. The, the one where Sister Judith started it says the sinless one um, sorry it says the world had for this erring woman only contempt and scorn but Jesus speaks words of comfort and hope it says the sinless one pities the weakness of the sinner and reaches to her a helping hand, while the hypocritical Pharisee denounce Jesus, be there, go and sin no more. And then he goes on to say, it is not Christ's follower that with averted eyes turns from the erring, leaving them unhindered to pursue their downward course. Those who are forward in accusing others and zealous in bringing them to justice are often in their own lives more guilty than they. There's so much truth in that statement. Oh, the, the, the one that really stood out for me is this one now. Men hate the sinner while they love the sin. Christ hates the sin but loves the sinner. I mean, that just got me to to think. I mean, you know, these words are inspired. They are so accurate. It's a nail in the short place. Man hates the sinner. This is why um, there's so much um, hatred among even believers. Um, uh, there's people who do not speak um, 
you know, the, the, it just shows you that it takes the spirit of God to be at the level where Christ was um, because he was filled with the spirit of God. And we can love the same way Jesus loves uh, and loved and the same way he loves even now. Because I'm trying to think it's only God who is going to um, give us that true, true love. And true love is when you, you see in a sinner the potential. I think we were reading at uh, one of the prayer retreats, uh, reading um, in uh, one of the workshops, uh, the book Ministry of Healing. Um, it, it sort of reminds me of the story in the Bible, you know, the 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 parable of um, of the prodigal son or the lost coin. Now, for instance, if you look at the parable of the prodigal son, the father in that case um, represents God, yeah? Um, this is the same love that we're learning here, the love of God, Christ's love for the sinner. But notice, he did not see how mad that young man was when he came back. The father was so compassionate because he is thinking, it, it, I think the Bible does say that he was waiting all this time looking down the course where he had gone, waiting to see this boy come back. And he runs and embraces the boy. This boy, I mean, I can just imagine how bad he was when he came back. But now notice now, the brother, the reaction of the brother, which again fulfills the statement, man hates the sinner. I mean, he loves sin but hates the sinner. And which is completely the opposite. God hates sin, but he loves. So I think we should be praying that when we see somebody erring, instead of us uh, uh, seeing, I think it is Satan who makes you see more of the good, I mean, I mean the evil that is, that is in somebody than the good. I think we can actually pray and say, God, help me to see, even in that brother who hates you, even in that person who doesn't like you, you can actually pray and ask God to blind you from their evil and to see the good that is in them because there's some good that God has in that person. And maybe it could be that smile. It could be maybe a word that he said before or that she said before. And if we pray to God, we'll start to see that the evil that seemed to be so apparent will seem to vanish. And that's how you know the Spirit of God is working. And you start praying for that person because you start to see the good that is in them. And this is true love. You know love says in the Bible, love covereth multitude of sins. This is what it means. But when you can only see the bad, the bad, and the bad, you know that that spirit is not of God. So yeah, that was the statement that um, got me there, that we need to pray that we love the sinner, but hate the sin as God does them. Amen. Amen. Powerful. Thank you, brother. Um, you know, so love is not puffed up. Um, love is love is it does covers a multitude of sin. Whatever um men um out there is doing, you know, they God turns a curse into a blessing. And we must remember that God is is love, even though they preach and preach and preach these things. We know that God is love. But God will, he, he loves the vilest sinner. Satan will always show us our sin. 
and make us feel that we are not worthy. But God can turn the vilest sinner into something good. Sadly, teens, go ahead, please. Uh, yes, good morning. Um, we went to, um, uh, we, you know, we do prison ministries, actually, it's the NEC prison ministries um, uh, programme today in, um, uh, I can't remember the name of the place, it's somewhere near Birmingham. And um, we went to Moldova a couple of, about two or three years ago. And, um, you know, we went to the, it was a man's prison. And we were so surprised when we went in there. There was there was about five men all dressed in suits, and they showed us to our seats. There was elders and deacons. Yeah. Apparently, the uh, uh, and, um, I think it's Pastor Paul, um, retired pastor, retired pastor had been visiting them. Um, in in Moldova, life is life. You don't come out, and these all these men had got life. They murdered and everything, and but it it given them Bible studies. And they turn over a new leaf, you know. God, it, God changed them, and so they was dressed in suits and ties. And it, you don't normally see that in prisons. No, you don't. It's, it's usually a t-shirt and you know, whatever. And um, and so God had changed their lives. And uh, and one of the mothers were converted when she saw the change in her son. And uh, you know, so it shows that even you know people write write people off because of the sin, but they still can turn around. And there was a young lad came. He was about fifteen. He'd done a prank at school, and um, it gone. It had gone wrong, and somebody got killed, and so he's got life. And they were taking him under, under, you know, under their wing to help him, because he'd, he'd, he'd lived the rest of his life in that prison. So you know, God can change lives. You know, the vilest sinner. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Beautiful. Beautiful testimony, that's right. You know, God can change the vilest person. And, you know, just by looking, looking at a, 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 a child of God can change a person, can make a person clean, can make them turn from their, their evil ways, their wicked ways, whatever it is that they were doing, and turn to Christ. Sister Kezia, go ahead, please. Yes, thank you, Sister Aline, and happy Sabbath, everyone on the platform. Yeah, beautiful comments. Yes, God is in the business of um, transforming lives. I just wanted to come back, you know, to um, when when sometimes sometimes when we we go and we we are not in agreement with with somebody, or we are thinking something. Um, not right between the two of, of, of you and so forth. Um, what I have found is, you know, it is so surprising that when you pray and you start praying for that person, God just removes all the barriers. To start really praying in love for that person, for that sinner, to say, Lord, we have both. I am thinking negatively about this and this is you know we both you you both died for us and what should be between us is just nothing but love but these things are, are preventing us to be to be in unity lord i'm just seeking for you for for that you know for all these things to be removed and god is in the business of restoration of relationships. That's why he takes us step by step. And that's why he he says here, he he reaches uh, reaches to her a helping hand. He's just waiting for us to really ask help from him. And he does exactly what we ask him to do, especially matters to do with our salvation. Because the moment we hold in anything in our hearts, anything, then we will miss the that peace 
which he wants us to have all the time. We will miss that uh, joy which he wants us to have. So no matter what it is, it could be even a boss at work. Um, just praying to say, Lord, I'm not in agreement with this, but I want you to remove self in it. I want you to remove um, prejudices. I want you to remove, you know, within me, not, you know, change me so that I can, I can have a mind of you so that I can have the peace which you want to give me. But this is not giving me peace, but remove it from me you see a change, a melting of heart that this thing does not matter any anymore. You know, you see it, it's, it's such a useless thing, you know, to even worry about. That's how God works in our lives. And he's not there to condemn us. He is there to help us to stretch his hand and to lift us up so that we can be like him, you know, changing our minds you know the greatest miracle as we have read previously that he is in the business of transforming us thank you amen thank you sister he will transform us he he takes the sword out of our hand whatever it is that we do and whatever it you know i've got um a problem at this time you know, with with my friend that her that her mom died, and it's just her brother. It's just my friend and her brother, and the and the animosity that is going on at this time with him is just like something different has taken him over. And you know, yesterday when my friend spoke to me. I had to pray and pray and pray for her. Is you you don't know what people are capable of. So I just had to ask the Lord to intervene in his life, not her life, in his life, and take away whatever spirit that he has in him. You know, God, as you say, God can move barriers, you know, and put love in his heart I, you don't know what people have in their heart you don't know what um, you know things that they will come out with and say but God wants us to have peace and joy in our heart Yeah, and this is what he is this is what he is saying to us every day come on to me all who are heavily laden and burdened, and I will give you rest. I will give you peace in your heart. Come on to me. Brother Paul, go ahead, please. Hi, thank you. Yes, good morning and happy Sabbath to everyone. You know, it's, isn't it amazing? You know, I was, uh, a friend of mine, he's a chef, and um, I just gave him a Bible. It took me a long time to give him this Bible. And I don't know why, it, the Lord was just keeping this Bible there. And I, I, I'd actually picked up this Bible more oh, seven months ago. And, and I had his name on it. And it just sat there and it sat there. And then eventually I picked it up and I brought it nearer to me um, at work. And it sat beside me. And it sat there for another six weeks before. Because I wanted to write something that was poignant and was... Uh, gonna help this guy he's a highly educated man highly educated he's got master degrees and he was a teacher and he, he's just so clever and and he and he likes the truth and he likes to help people so he has a good heart and um and i i um i i finally came around to writing um of the truth of the bible then and that it is a history book and that it is a book of science and and true health. I also gave him the book of uh, Ministry of Healing, and um, and he came to me and he said that he'd read a page out of this book. He read the first page of the Bible, and I was like, "Amen, Lord, Amen, 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 Amen." And I said to him, 
You know, if there's one thing you should realize about the Bible, it's now he's a chef. He he's a, a lecturer, a retired lecturer chef. And if anybody knows anything about pastries and about French cooking, you'll know what a millefeuille is. Now, a millefeuille, what the term means is a thousand layers. And I said to him, the Bible's like a millefeuille. And once we start to read it, we can't take it at face value because that that wouldn't be very prudent of us to take it at face value. And, and, and I gave him, I said, there's one piece of advice that I would give anybody that was starting out and reading the Bible, and that is to pray and ask God to be with them and give them wisdom and guidance and, and ponder on what you're reading. Don't just rush through it, because you're going to find if you rush through it, you're going to end up hating God and you're not going to get the truth out of it. And so he, he was thankful and uh, understood that Milfoy was a thousand layers and that there are many, many, many layers in the Bible. And it's like what we're reading now. There are many layers here. And it, is it poignant in today's world? It very much is. And as Sister Dion wrote, Satan aim, Satan's aims is to turn us from God, which is love in brackets, and cause us to hate one another. He, Satan, does not like unity, love. So, and what I want to do is just point out where we are today and with what the elder went through earlier on about Trump and what have you. And what is that? Is, is what we're reading in this book relevant to us today? Oh, 100 percent it is. And when we look at the Pharisees and what they did with this erring woman, as, as she's called, is they set the stage for for, for Jesus, they to set him up. And so Jesus, he obviously knew exactly what they were doing. He's Jesus. He's God. So, but these guys, they set the stage. They set the stage. Thank you, sister. And they set the stage for Jesus. They set the stage for us. So when we look around the world, I mean, they're all feathers of the same wing. I mean, we've just seen um, uh, the, the new... PM for the UK off to visit the Pope. I mean, <laughs> you couldn't make it up. They all, every single one of them, every single one of them, follow the dictates of the Vatican. There is none that don't. And if they do, their, their history. I won't say too much because I know this is going out live. But when we look today, I'll give you a for instance. So we see in Manchester in the UK, Manchester City. So let's look at sports. So, for instance, you have Manchester United and Manchester City. What's going on there? Let's ask ourselves, what's going on there? Why is it around the world that all the political stages are down to two parties? What's going on there? Why is it one has one narrative, one has another narrative? What's going on there? Why is it we have racism? What's going on there? Why is it we have migrants? What's going on there? This is all creating hatred, to hate each other. That if there was any truth in any of them, as the Bible tells us, they would be preaching this, not to hate the sinner, but to hate the sin. Does any one of them, rhetorical question, does any one of them in the world promote that term? Hate the sin and not the sinner. Is there anybody? Anyone, please tell me, anybody on the political stage in the world promoting that? Because if they are, we now have a truth, a truthful person. But they will be gone. There will be history. They will not be on the world stage. They will not be in the media. They will be completely blacklisted, 100%. And you are never going to hear from them unless God guides you to that person for truth. And he does do that with us. He guides us to truth. So the point being, the world is built. I mean, we we're in 32 wars around the world. All the po everything's contrived. Everything is narrative. Everything is, is, is all there for hate, for death. They love it. And they want us to hate one another. They do not want us to do this. If we partake in the world, it doesn't matter. Whether you think, oh, I can, I won't do this, I won't do that. You will. 
Now you will, because the subliminal messaging will get you, and you will end up. There is so many people that hate. There's so many people I meet that hate the migrants. They hate this person. They hate that football team. They hate that sport. They hate this person for this. There's so much hatred, and we must take ourselves away from it. And like, you know, like we keep talking about, and it's so important. It's coming. And if we're not ready, if we're not, we're, as we see, the cleansing comes from the inside. You know, meaning there's nothing we can do. That that erring woman, she done absolutely nothing. She was imparted and she was touched. Her heart was touched and she turned to God and never strayed. How wonderful. How wonderful is that not to stray? But if we do, we know we have. Jesus is going to be there to help us and pick us up and hold our hand and to carry us and to take our forward because none of us are perfect. So it's very important that when we read these beautiful, beautiful God-inspired words, we should be bringing them through our day. Every single day we should be pondering on what has been said. I ponder on them so much. I ponder on them so much. But there's one thing I'm lacking in doing, and I speak to other people that are lacking in doing it. I'm coming to an end. Is reading the word of God. What is it with what is it with the flesh? What is it? You know, there's one thing I asked for right at the very beginning, 2019. I went, I didn't know who I was talking to, and I said, I want the truth. I want the truth, and you know I want to touch it, see it, feel it. And I am willing to give my life for that truth. I didn't know I was talking to God. I didn't have a clue I was talking to God. Yet, even though I backslide and I sin, whenever somebody tries to deceive me, and I don't know what they're doing. I don't know whether they're trying to deceive me or not. I don't know whether they're lying to me. I'm not educated in the Bible. I'm a student, as we all are. But the Holy Spirit comes and shows me. He shows me the truth. And I know it's him. And I know it's the truth. And I know he's guiding me. And sometimes that truth is bitter. It is so bitter, the tears stream. But one thing is if we ask for that truth and we ask for that guidance, we do anything in the name of Jesus, it will be given to us. And I urge everybody, turn to your Bible, turn to God, because he's the only strength. He's the only way that we are going to get through what's coming to us like a steam train it is they are gonna this world is gonna change like unbelievable that we've never the bible tells us like nothing we have ever ever seen before this is what is 100 percent coming and it is just around the corner time is flying as anybody knows boom 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 they gone we gone we gone i can't believe it's friday i was like wow it's friday yes i was like wow it's preparation day wow couldn't believe it i, I thought it was wednesday Boom, the whole week was just gone. Time is flying. We don't have time to mess around, people. We, we do not have time to mess around. We, there's only one thing that we should be doing, and that is getting ourselves right with God and getting out on those streets and drawing as many people to God as we possibly, possibly can. Yes, near the end of September already. 2024, gone. 2025, now we're going to start to see. 2025 is when it's planned. And from 2025, 2030, hell on earth is going to be here. And we need to make sure that we are so tight with God and we are so right with God that if we don't, we know the results, you know, brothers and sisters. And I pray for each and every one of us, everyone. I pray for the conference. I pray for Ted Wilson. I pray for Mark Finley. I pray for uh, Conrad Vine. I pray for every one of everyone. I pray for everyone. Let none be lost, brothers and sisters. And may the Lord have mercy on every single one of us. And may his, his mercy endure forever. Generations, a thousand generations. How beautiful is he? It brings tears to my heart. How beautiful he is. Just so wonderful our God is. And I pray we all turn to him. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Yes, we're not predicting any dates. <laughs> we do not know <laughs> the time, the date, or the hour. Those who hate Christ um, are putting him back on the cross again. Yeah, they're driving the nails in his hands. They're plaiting the, the 
crown of thorns upon his head. Yeah, those who hate, who hate, that's what they are. They have their uh, reward. And when Christ comes, they will receive their reward. Brother Desire, go ahead, please. Amen. Um, I just wanted to say, um, um, the, the thought that came to my mind, uh, contemplating about uh, about that part of, uh, thank you for those powerful thoughts and uh, what Brother Paul was sharing. Um, I'll try and keep it short. It says, um, men hate the sinner while they love the sin. Christ hates the sin, but loves the sinner. And then it says, this will be the spirit of all who follow him. We need to pray for the spirit. I was thinking about this um, now, turning to what's happening in God's church. Uh, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the news that uh, we've been uh, uh, following. Uh, the council culture that has been going on. And um, I was reflecting on that, uh, reading this. What is the spirit that is being encouraged in us when we listen to what that man said? What that man said. I was just, I was just saying, for instance, um, I'll be honest, say that... Um, Sometimes, you know, you hear what somebody has said, like uh, uh, Brother Kanundio, um, when you know that the faith has been misrepresented. Um, and you, 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 you feel very angry, you know, that somebody would say things like that. Um, but again, what I'm reminding myself reading this is that it, Satan can actually work and uh, bring us to hate one another, even in God's church, without you realize that now you're hating the man and instead of hating the sin. And... Um, I was just thinking that we need to be careful as to uh, the sort of uh, sources of information. We need to test the spirit, even when we choose uh, uh, the person uh, to listen to about these issues, you know, because there's a spirit behind every every presentation. And if it's not the spirit of Christ, it's going to plant hate for the man. It might appear sincere, but again, that sentence is so conclusive. This will be the spirit of all who follow him. If I start to feel in myself that I don't like this man, then you know that is not the spirit of Christ. Yes, the man is erred, the man is, is messed up, uh, he has misrepresented us. Um, but how do I go about that situation? Do I say, I don't want to hear again from this man? Um, I'm not going to support, uh, I'm not going to listen to any sermon that this man is going to preach again. Now, that's hate for the man. That's not a hate for sin. So, I think this is this is a very important lesson that we need to take away, um, especially with what's going on in God's church. And mainly, I should say, we need to be careful to test the spirit. So many people are saying things on the internet, so-called adventists with the so-called ministries or so-called publishing the news of what's happening in the church. We need to test the spirit. Are they promoting the spirit of Christ, which is hate for sin, love for the sinner? Or do they promote hate for sin, 
hate for the sinner because it might appear that they are they might sound like they really hate the sin true but they also appear that they hate the sinner too and we know even though that seemed to be close but that's not the spirit of christ god help us yes indeed god does help us and i pray that um we will still hold on to his hand while these things are happening around us and they are going to be being, being more prevalent and um, tatley twins go ahead please yes i was looking at the line where it says those who who are forward and accusing others and zealous in bringing them to justice are often in their own lives more guilty than they and what, this is what we saw in the in um in uh, this case because of they led her into sin and then they they put the devised this plot to get Jesus, you know, so they were m much more guilty than she was. And um, she was she was like a victim. And, um, you know, you see that often. You know, the, the people, uh, the, the pious, you know, they look pious and they're nice and they're, and, uh, and their lives are really bad. And then they and, get found out, don't they? Yeah, you see, you see all these, you, you know, all these famous people, you know, they're they doing all the good they can. You know, they look as, it looks as though they're doing all the good they can. And then later on, sometimes after they're dead, after they're dead, all the dirt comes out. Yeah, and get all stripped of what they're, yeah. you know, their... The um, medals and whatever, and uh, uh, the, the titles. <laughs> yeah, it's true. You know, so we have, you have to be careful, you know. You, you, when you uh, point a finger at one person, you, you're pointing at three fingers mm. back at yourself. Yeah, and you know, it's a... It's a a delicate situation, but you have to handle it right by God's grace. Yes, thank you. Thank you indeed. You know, um, your sins will find you out. And what happens in the dark always comes to light. Always. And what we think um, no one else sees, God sees. God is the one that he, he knows everything, sees everything. Brother Paul, go ahead, please. Thank you. Yeah, I just wanted to clarify that I'm not um, date setting. Um, I would never even contemplate doing that, that, you know, con setting a date when Jesus might come. Um, what, what I'm doing is I'm giving the information that I see that I mean, we need to look, and we need to be, um, we need to be very, very real about what is going on, and not kid ourselves, because this is where a lot of people are going to be lost. Oh, I've got to, I've heard it so many times, and it's true. Oh, it's okay. I've got, I've got tomorrow. I've got tomorrow. Never comes. Tomorrow never comes. Never, ever, ever comes. And that's why the Lord tells us on this day. So it's every day. If you're struggling, it's every day every moment take it take it to god because that's the only way it's going to be cleansed from the inside not from the out so the only way is through god to have any problems that we have to be cleansed and to be cleared and it's not just about addictions to you know smoking or alcohol or porn or whatever it might be it's character this is about character as well i mean a lot of people with ego as we know how destructive that can be is phenomenal. But we need to be very real that already they're openly talking about Sunday, a Sunday law. There is companies set up in Europe to bring in the Sunday law already. It's going to be very subtle, as I've heard people say, and they're right. It's not going to be a slam dunk. It's not going to be in your face. It's going to be very subtle. Everything's going to be subtle. It's going to be slowly slowly catchy monkey that's how they work that's how they operate we just need to look at history nothing new under the sun this is how they've always done it and they will go back to what they've done before the vatican as we heard mr diop saying brother diop saying the the vatican's changed no it hasn't that's a lie and he knows it the vatican has not changed i don't hate the man i hate his sin that is a character of Christ. And that's exactly how every single one of us should be. Is not when somebody says something and we know it to be wrong. What are you doing shooting the messenger? That's common practice in the world. Shoot the messenger. Everybody shoots the messenger. When I bring the truth to somebody, 
They shoot me down. They're not shooting the message. They're shooting me. And that's what's going to happen to all of us. They shoot us down. As soon as we bring the truth, they will shoot us down because your truth is your truth and my truth is my truth and their truth is their truth. And this is the garbage that they teach out there. And everybody thinks everybody has their own truth. But this is the dates they are setting is between 20 to It's already started. People will tell you it's already started. There are people who tell you it started 100 years ago. There are people who tell you it started in 2020. There are people who tell you that it's really going to start because there's another one. There's another. When we look at 2020, was that a sign of the times? Was that a warning to us? Oh, yeah, it was. When we look at everything that they put in place, this is all around the Sunday law. It's all around the Sunday law. It's prepping us. It's prepping people. This is mind control. It's coercion. This is what it all is, and this is what they were doing. And everything we saw happen in the Sunday law is uh, with the with with the um, pandemic is coming with the Sunday law. Everything you just got to pick it apart, and you'll see everything that they did is going to be exactly the same, except it's going to be a lot, lot, lot worse. And the governments will control everything. Food, finance, everything. Everything will be smart. They call it smart, don't they? Everything will be smart. They'll control everything in your house. They'll control your car. Everything. They're going to control your banks. Your bank accounts, everything's going to be digital. Everything. Shopping. Everything. 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 You're going to be able to do nothing. And this is, if you look at the pandemic and pick it apart and see what they did to us, they segregated, they had us hating, they had everything. And we need to be aware of these. This is the sign of the times. These are the signs. We cannot miss them. We cannot just flip it off. And any, for me, to be honest, anybody who believes in an invisible boogeyman flying through the air, attacking and randomly killing people, is just craziness because there's no proof. Not, not an iota of proof that that exists. It's all manipulation and control. That's what it's all about. And I pray that we all go to God. He'll give you the truth. He'll give us the truth. Amen. Amen. Amen, Brother Paul. Amen. You know, um, as you said, they shoot the messenger. Yes, they're shooting Christ because it's his message. It's his word. It's his truth. And that's what they shoot. Yes, um, they don't want to hear truth because the truth um, will set them free. Then they love sin. Men love sin. You know, um, let us learn from the history of these books. Yes, um, all Elegy Wise books and the Bible. Yeah, and if we do not learn from them, we tend to repeat it. And as it said, we have such a short time to get it right with God. But we need to ask ourselves, how does Christ see me? How does he see me in this, in this, um, where we are? You know, um, the truth is to enlighten us, not to embarrass us. It is to enlighten us. And remember, by rejecting Christ, we have this, we have decided our own destiny, our own destiny. And, you know, we can't find our way through this wilderness without the spirit of prophecy. This is the testimony of Jesus Christ, where um, there is no vision. The people are, the people will perish if there's no vision. So I pray that, you know, as we seek to um, go through the rest of the um, desire of ages, we all, we all are, are taking, taking note, taking something away from this because we read this every day. God's door is never closed. It's never closed because he doesn't sleep or slumber. But we just have to make sure that we are in the world and we are taking everything that we are reading and, and the powerful um, points that everyone is making is so poignant. It, is, it, is, it, it will help us because the prayer retreat ministry, um, you know, I was on an, uh, another um, group before I came onto this one. And I was bored, I wasn't being fed. I, but this one has taught me so much, so much. And I thank God that I found the prayer retreat. And I'm sure a lot of people that's on here, it has turned 
and changed them also from being what they were to what they are now and going forward in Christ Jesus. So brothers and sisters, I thank you. Thank you for being with us and and worshiping and coming every morning to listen. Um I'm not as as Moses says, I'm not eloquent. <laughs> I don't know big words and I I can hardly speak sometimes. But I know that God is is working on all of us and I pray that all of us will um see each other one day on the sea of glass and if um we will all come back in in december we can all see each other in person before before christ comes so thank you each and everyone for um a blessing i've had such a such a mighty time in this um among the space thank you thank you um can i have someone to pray please Heavenly Father, we come to you this Sabbath morning thankful for love, thankful for the blessings, and thank you for the blessings of the chapter that we've just studied. We pray, Lord, you'll continue to bless Sister Arlene and all those who are doing this work, because we know we can glean from what you have uh, given Sister White, that we can glean the truth, and that we can, and we know that it, 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 the Bible stands up as the truth, and we know that these, this word that you gave her is the word of God. So we pray, Lord, that you'll be with us and keep us faithful. Be with us as we go to our various churches today. We may say again a Sabbath day's blessing. In the precious name of Jesus, amen. 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 Thank you for your beautiful prayer. Thank you. And thank you each and every one once again. And happy, have a happy Sabbath. Um, over to you, Elder Desire. Thank you. Amen. 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 Um, well, we never thought that we were going to to have the entire session. Uh, it was beautiful. Uh, Sister Allen, may God bless you. Uh, we were truly blessed uh, with this uh, powerful chapter among the snares. I think we will uh, continue. We'll go back to this chapter and uh, go through those lessons that we picked out that God uh, gracefully shared with us throughout this uh, study. May God bless your ministry, Sister Allen. We look forward to the next chapter that you take for us. Um, so tomorrow we're going to be moving on to the new chapter, which is The Light of Life. Wow, I think it's going to be exciting. Um, Mother Kezia is going to be taking us through that chapter uh, as of tomorrow morning. Uh, but yes, let's keep each other in prayer. Let's keep uh, God's church in prayer. And uh, if anything, what I've taken away from this chapter is we need to love the way God loves. And uh, that is not going to happen uh, by so much contemplation. It will happen when we invite Christ to dwell in our hearts. He will do it for us, not by might, nor by power, but by his spirit. Thank you, brethren. Have a wonderful Sabbath, wherever you are. There will be, I believe, Elder Mufeku will open the platform uh, uh, during Sabbath school time at 10 o'clock. Then in the evening, uh, there's the Adventist home. Uh, which is um, which starts from 7 to 8 p.m. So if you're available, please do tune in and uh, the platform will be open. I'd like to say that uh, as Mount of Olives, we're going to have a uh, half-night prayer next. Uh, uh, that's going to be Sabbath next week, uh, Sabbath evening next week, yeah. So uh, please prepare and bring your prayer requests. Uh, that will be our last Sabbath of the month. God bless you, brethren, and have a wonderful Sabbath. Amen. Amen. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Have a great day. Happy Bye. Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Blessings. Sabbath blessings. Happy Sabbath.